you know, one thing that I've that I noticed in losing guys and losing friends was that there's we don't have a good protocol in America. <laughs> we don't have you know in other countries they have a protocol that they're going to follow. If someone dies, here's the protocol. This is what you're going to do. You're going to eat this food. You're going to say these prayers. You're going to go to this type of ceremony. You're going to go to this other type of ceremony, and then you're going to go to a final ceremony. You're going to have a get together and then that's it. The grieving is over. That's we followed the protocol and now we are going to essentially move on. And everyone accepts that that's the level of grieving that's going to be done. And there's different variants about this throughout the world. In America, we we have so many different we have so many different types of people in America and, and so many different protocols have been, you know, through this country that it's kind of watered down and it's different for different communities and different people. So different cultures, yeah, that's what the, really the word is different cultures. So many different cultures are in America that the protocol of death, which doesn't happen very often in people's lives, we don't have a great protocol for it. So what happens to us in leadership positions is we need to sort of formulate a protocol or pick a protocol. And I hate, oh look, it's like disturbing to use the word protocol when you're talking about losing someone. But there's a reason that I'm using that word because if you don't have a protocol to follow, it's like when you're flying a jet, Dave, and there's there's something that happens, there's some emergency signal comes on, there's a protocol that you follow that you don't have to think about, that you're gonna execute, that's gonna get you out of that situation. You know, when we have a parachute malfunction, there's a protocol to follow. I'm not, I'm not creatively making up decisions of how I'm gonna handle when my parachute's not working. No, I'm gonna follow the protocol because I don't want to be thinking at this point. So that's why I think this idea around protocol is something to say, okay, here's what we're going to do. And I I think that's the right move. Does this mean that at the end of, you go through these ceremonies, you go through these procedures, you go through this protocol that everyone goes, oh great, now it's over, now we can move on? No, but you also can make part of that protocol. Hey, listen, here's what we're gonna do to in memory of, here's a, a thing that we're gonna set up, here's a scholarship that we're gonna set up, here's a, an annual run that we're gonna do, here's a, a, a party that we're gonna have on this date. You know, you, There's things that you can do that, that then extend the, re, the remembrance and you make sure that you, you remember but you don't dwell. Remember what happens, you remember the people but you don't dwell in, those, in that because now we're living in the past and no one, wants you to be living in the past. So the interesting thing and the right answer when when you start talking about these hard situations is when you get in hard situations, the fundamentals of leadership, the, the fundamentals of leadership become even more important. The worse things get, the more important they are. What's what's interesting about the principles that we teach is the principles function in all situations. And you don't get to this level of intensity or this level of chaos and say, oh, wait a second, pull out these other principles. You don't get to a situation where you've lost a leader and say, oh, okay, well, now it's time to pull, break glass and pull out these other emergency principles. And we saw a lot of this when COVID kicked off in companies and all of a sudden the market changed or people couldn't come to work or you know any number of things unfolded we didn't say oh here's our you know pandemic combat leadership procedures no the procedures that we use the procedures that we teach we have to focus on them harder we have to make sure that we're following these these protocols these these laws of combat leadership so that's what we have to do and, and you know, that, so that's, that's sort of the pragmatic side of, of the answer to this is like, hey, guess what? Here's what we gotta do to get back to work. Here's what we need to move, do to move forward. So that, that is a very pragmatic answer. The other part of the answer, you know, you use the term grieve, like, well, okay, this is something we're not normally balancing. So we don't, this is not a normal thing to say, oh, okay, well, now we have to grieve. Okay, what's that look like? Well, a company like this may have never grieved in a unified way before because 
they might not have had anyone die inside the company before. That's not unheard of. So definitely a difficult situation. And it was really neat to see that company close ranks, which is a term we use in the military, which means we're going we're gonna to stick together. And it was really neat to see that company close ranks and, and move through that and continue when continue to move forward and continue on that great trajectory that they have in what they're doing. Great business, great people, and amazing to see what they're doing. This manager I'm working with directly is he's pretty fired up. He's frustrated. You made me look bad. And he's gonna kinda go on the attack to the CFO for what he did. Here's a little bit of tactical discussion here. What do I do? What do I say? What do I say? Do I get defensive? Do you do that? Or do you open your mind up? What I'm doing is I'm winning. 